Thank you, Lord. So we want to welcome you to New Beginnings 2 uh, at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministry. New Beginnings 2 is a Christ-dependent 12-step, self-help 12-step recovery program. Uh, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. That's found in Philippians 4 and 13. Uh, we have a theme scripture that we read uh, every time we get together in 2, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. It says the servant of the Lord, whose servant I am, I am the servant of the Lord, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, her adventure will give them repentance through the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And that what the scripture is saying that uh, it is uh, uh, recovery is in the Bible. It says it right there that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. God's going to give you the tools. I'm going to instruct you. That's my job. My job is not to strive with you, not to be running up and down the street, not be calling your house, uh, where you at and worrying about you and all that. My job is to instruct those that oppose themselves. Amen. And God, he will give you the repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth because he wants you to be set free more than we do, you do. Uh, you know, he wants you to be set free. And you will be able with the tools that you get from this 12-step program, this four-month 12-step program, you will be able to recover your own self out of the snare of the devil. And we thank God for it. So my name is Doris Sorrell. I'm your instructor teacher. I'm a retired registered nurse. I am the pastor teacher at uh, CFTADM, which is Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California. The Zoom number is 508 533 2949 3333. And there's my phone number 916 308 2980. Uh, I don't answer the phone if I don't recognize the caller. So leave a text or a message and I will return your call because it's just too many people calling these days that are telemarketers and, and other folk, scammers. <laughs> so just leave a message. I, I, I text. I'm a texter. So leave a text message and I will return your call. Your other uh, associate instructor and facilitator of the ministry uh, is Donetta Jefferson. She is a certified alcohol and drug counselor uh, with the state of California, a certified addiction specialist. And she's also a deaconess at uh, CFTADM, Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries. And we are here to uh, help you. We are God's servants and we thank God for it. Amen. The 12 step program. Uh, we have a theme word and our group uh, that goes, or group of words that goes with each step, such as step number one, which we're going to do tonight is understanding denial. So that's, so on your test in about a month and a half from now, you're going to be asked what is the theme word or group of words for each step. Uh, you're going to be asked the theme song, which was just played. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm going to hold my head up and I'm going on with the Lord. Amen. So your theme song is my mind is made up. Your theme scripture is 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. So the theme word and our group, each step has a word or a group of words that describes what it's about. And each step uh, builds on the previous step. That's why it's important not to miss any step. So step one is understanding denial. We will do that one tonight. Step two is hope. That's next week. Hope builds on denial. And then step three is surrender. Step four is inventory. Step five is confession, truth, and integrity. Step six is acceptance. Step seven, humility. Step eight, willing to make amends. 
Step nine, forgiveness and making amends. Step 10, continue to take inventory. Step 11, inner growth and maturity. And step 12, paying it forward. So each one of those steps builds upon the prior, the previous step. So again, we have to, you have to make your mind up to make a commitment to not miss any Thursdays, no steps. Make Don't miss anything. We're going to uh, go through this together. We're here with you to help you make it good. Amen. So step number one, understanding denial. Denial is the process by which addiction is maintained. In other words, people stay addicts because they're in denial. And uh, so step number one, we admit it that we were powerless over our addictions and bondages and that our lives have become unmanageable. A person that is in denial uh, refuses to uh, believe that their life is powerless. I mean, anybody else, everybody else can see that it's powerless. You know, they, they toe up from the flow up, they're out of control. But until you get to step number one, uh, understanding denial and admit that you're powerless over these addictions, that this thing has got power over your life and these bondages, you're going to stay in it because that's what denial is. Denial keeps you in bondage. It maintains an addiction. So step number one is understanding and coming out of denial. And uh, so the, the, the thing that when people come here, they admit, I'm ready. I'm ready for this program. I am powerless over this addiction and this bondage. And my life has become unmanageable and I need help. Basically, that's what step number one is. Amen. So here's a look, here's a chart where we look at denial. Unfortunately, in Christ, some Christian programs, we don't like to talk about psychology and the, the body and stuff like that. But we have to understand that we're more than a spirit. Thank God that we're born again. Thank God that we're a spirit. But we still have a mind. We still have emotions. And we still have a physical body. So denial affects all three parts of us. So denial is a psychological and physiological defense mechanism. That's the definition of denial. It helps us deal with emotional and physical trauma by temporarily ignoring its pain. So it's a good thing to help you uh, deal with some hurt, but it's supposed to be temporary. But what happens is uh, when it's prolonged, denial becomes pathologic. That means it becomes a disease. So a, pe a person can be an uh, alcoholic or a drug addict and say, I'm all right. I, 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 uh, my daughter, one of my daughters, and she set free now, God set her free, uh, was an addict. And I would ask her, how you doing, Charlotte? I'm okay. She wasn't okay at all. She was just in denial, was not okay. I'm all right. No, you're not, you know. But she had to come to that uh, realization herself, and she did. And so when, when you stay in denial, it becomes a, a disease. And that's why when you come to your senses, I'm going to go back to that one there. We, when you come to the place where you admit you powerless over this thing, the addiction, the bondage, whatever it is, because bondage and addictions is more than drugs, is more than alcohol. There's got all kinds of bondages out there. You know, each one of us could have a different kind of bondage. When you get to that place where you admit you are powerless over your addiction, your bondages, and that your life has become unmanageable and that you need help, you're in a good place because you come out of denial. You're no longer denying that you have issues. And so <clears throat> Medical doctors up there where it says MDs, medical doctors, psychiatrists, uh, psychologists, behavioral therapists, counselors, social workers, ministers, we all have a vested interest in understanding denial. They use this very same um, standard 
uh, definition of denial in any 12 step program that you go to, uh, except maybe some Christian ones. They don't want, they don't like the word psychiatrist. They don't like the word psychologist. They don't like the word medical doctors when you're too, too high up there. But I'm telling you, as long as you're still in a body, as long as you still got a mind, because psych, psych, psychology only means, that just simply means the study of your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. Now, I don't do the psychiatrist thing as a Christian because I think that's from the dark side. But psychology, that is just the study of your soul, which is the study of your mind, the study of your will, and the study of your emotions. So psychologists, behavioral therapists, counselors, social workers, ministers, and some doctors, we got a vested interest in uh, understanding denial and helping you. Amen. So God tells us in Proverbs 4, and I believe that's a 6 over there, but I can't tell because that thing is in the way, uh, that with all of your getting, uh, get an understanding. With all of your getting, get an understanding. This is a thing, denial. This is a thing that you can understand. So uh, a denial in the is a failure to acknowledge an unacceptable truth. So it's just an unacceptable truth when we are in bondages, you know, like um, I used to be a battered woman and I used to just try to just deny that, you know, but it came to a point where I, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I had to accept the truth and I had to come out of that. So denial, there's those like, it goes through five phases and it's kind of like, uh, death and dying when, when someone dies uh that you love you kind of in denial for a minute because you don't want to deal with it you say well this this can't be true this can't be happening you know that's not they didn't really die when in truth they did they didn't really die that's called denial and the next step in that phase is anger and then the next step is negotiation next step is sadness and finally acceptance this is a phase that everyone goes through when you're in denial. When you get to the acceptance stage, you're in a good place. <laughs> you're in a good place. So denial has five phases. And we're going to look at those now. So the denial process in bondages are similar to the grief process in death and dying. Both have five phases, denial, anger, negotiation, sadness, and acceptance. Phase one of the denial process is denial. We uh, go, the body, your body, your physical body, and your psychological body, which is your mind, will, emotion, goes through denial to numb the pain we feel from trauma. Our brains are designed by God to automatically blot out a hurtful truth to help us cope with a traumatic event. This was created by God to be short-term and it oftentimes it only lasts momentarily. But to stay in denial is bad or call path, that's when it's called pathological. It becomes a disease. And so pathological denial finds other prolonged ways to block out painful truths. So say we might, you might've started drinking at a young age, you know, might've started th thinking it was fun to drink. And then you find out, lady, this ain't so much fun, you know, but uh, folk tell you, you ought to stop drinking, you're an alcoholic and, and you're in denial. Oh, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. So people medicate, they, they self-medicate with substance abuse uh, to deal with the trauma. And we have all kinds of trauma. Sometimes we, we get into these drinking and alcohol because of some trauma that happened to us. And uh, so in order to deal with that trauma, we self-medicate. That can be with just about anything. It can be with uh, drugs, alcohol, all kinds of bondages. There's, there's so many kinds of bondages, but they're all not designed to keep you in uh, denial. So then, so that's what denial is. That is the definition of denial. Uh, phase two is anger. Uh, people that have bondages, they get angry. And, but many times is misplaced anger. And I'm going to give you on the next slide, I'm going to give you the right place to put that anger. 
So misplaced anger has its own host of problems. We don't even have to go through it at this point. We'll get in it later on in the 12 steps. But it's got its own host of problems. And then phase three is negotiation and bargaining. And these are often fake attempts and false promises that we make to quit. Oh, I can quit. Well, you know, the, there was a, used to be a commercial years ago when they used to make commercials about cigarettes. <laughs> and, the, and the guy said, I can quit. I quit smoking cigarettes. I quit a thousand times. Well, if you quit a thousand times, that meant you went back 999 times. So that's, you know, we just fool ourselves, you know, negotiating and bargaining. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't need help. I don't need to go to the 12 steps program because I can do this. You know, no, you can't. You need help. Amen. And then grief and sadness. So then you come to the point where we may, we've been made to face the painful reality and face our powerlessness in these bondages. Now, this is the beginning of true surrender. When you start feeling sad and, and grieving, yeah. And we realize we need help. We need help. And then, so we go to the program or uh, some counseling or something to get ourselves, to go get some help, to come out of denial. So then we get to phase five, acceptance. Acceptance, I need help. But along with acceptance comes fear, fear of the unknown, fear of change. But we realize that a change has got to be made. So that's part of facing reality. It's, it's got to be made. You know, uh, some people are afraid of going through withdrawal. They're afraid of all kinds of things. You know, they will put all kinds of stuff in there to keep you from getting set free. But uh, so you got to, uh, this fear that you may be feeling, fear of the unknown, fear of change, let's just throw it out the window. Amen. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Uh, we're going to deal with this. We gonna, we're here to help you deal with this. So part of facing reality is facing fear. And so that makes the first step a really big one. Step number one, I am powerless. And my life has become unmanageable and I need help. I need help. So despite the fear, here I am. So we can look at denial. We can look at anger. We can look at negotiations and bargaining. We can look at sadness and we can look at acceptance in the Bible. All five of those phases are in the Bible. So I'm going to go, let's go to Isaiah 44, 20, and let's look at denial. Now, remember, denial is where you're not facing the truth. You're just uh, out there doing something, and uh, you're not facing what's really true. In denial. Well, here in Isaiah 44 and 20, it said, he feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul or say, is there not a lie in my right hand? See, that's denial. When you got a crack pipe, uh, 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 alcohol or drugs or whatever, and just pouring your enemy down your mouth and saying, I'm okay, I'm okay. That's called denial. But see, that's why we understand in denial tonight and we coming out of denial because a person who's in denial uh, can't even see that that's a lie in their right hand. And, you know, people will ask you, why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep doing this in denial? But the good thing is tonight, step one, we understand what denial is and we're coming out of it. So that's phase one. And then phase two is anger. Anger, yeah. You have a right to be angry because this stuff has made your life unmanageable, but we're going to show you how, where to put the anger, to put the blame. Because a lot of people want to blame their mother, their father, their wife, their husband, their children. Uh, uh, blame, 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 blame. The white man, the black man, the whatever, you know, that's the devil pitting people against uh, each other. But there is someone to blame. So one good thing about the truth, you know, the word is true. God tells us 
where to place the blame. So let's go to Romans 5. So we can stop blaming mama, stop blaming daddy. Because if we if we come out, and I come out of a background where I wasn't raised in the church. I come out of a background where my parents were alcoholic. They had bondages themselves. And uh, but so how can I blame somebody that was in a bondage? I'm in I'm not in a bondage now, but when I was in a bondage, I I couldn't blame them because they was in a bondage too. And who put us into bondage? I'll tell you who put us in there. Good old Adam. <laughs> so we're going to find somebody to blame. Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, Romans 5 and 12. Uh, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned. It ruled from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So we got into all these bondages, every one of us, every bondage that we've been in, we could, if you want to put a blame on somebody, if you want to be angry at somebody, let's put it where it belongs. Let's put it on Adam. He did that. Amen. Get it off your wife. Get it off yourself. Get it off your husband. Get it off your children. Get it off your mother and father. They might have been drug addicts. They might have been alcoholics. Get it off all of us. Put it where it belongs on Adam. Verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, and that being Adam, who brought this on us, that sin nature, many be dead, much more by the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has bounded unto many. So Jesus come to set us free from Adam's sin. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one, again, Adam, to condemnation, but the free gift is as of many offices unto justification. For if by one man's offense. I'm going to come off the PowerPoint because I want to make this uh I want to make this point in, in person. Verse 17 out of Romans 5. If by one man's offense death reigned. See death is sin. That's all that stuff that we was doing to ourselves. By one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign and rule in life by one, Jesus Christ. So what that said is, Adam brought this sin, the sin nature, all these addictions, all this came to us by Adam. But Jesus Christ came to take it away. So one man brought the offense and one man brought grace so that we could, death used to reign, R-E-I-G-H-N, which means it had his way with us. You know, uh, uh, the devil had his way with me when I was out there in bondage and oppressed and low self-esteem and uh, being used and abused. But Jesus Christ came and set me free. And now I reign in life. I am an overcomer. I rule. Amen. I have nothing missing, nothing broken about me because of Jesus Christ. So now I won't go and blame my alcoholic mother and father because just like I was in bondage, they was in bondage. Amen. I won't go blame uh, the, 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 the man that battered me because just like I was a battered woman, he was in just as much uh, bondage by being a man who battered. 
You see, that's what sin does. Sin reigned and ruled in our lives. And you can blame Adam. So let's put that anger where it belongs. Adam, and he, he and his wife was the one that gave place to the devil. And see, and the reason we do this is because you got to have a place to put that anger. Let's put it in the right place. Amen. And get it off these other people that's in body so we can get set free. So when Jesus Christ came and set us free. So verse 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, by the offense of one, that's Adam, judgment came up on all of us. <laughs> he did it. If you want to blame somebody again, do it to him. Even so, by the righteousness of one, Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men. So now we can get over, over Adam. We, we know where it came from. It came from Adam, you know, and now Jesus Christ come to set us free. So let's go and forgive Adam and let Adam go. <laughs> Amen. Once he gave place to the devil, he was in body too. And here come Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Even yeah. so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That means receive what he did. He going to set you free. And we go on to verse 19. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. No, your mama didn't make you that way. Your daddy didn't. It was sin. The sin nature came up on us all through Adam. So, so I'm going to read 19 again. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. But look at the next part of the scripture. So by the obedience of one, many will be are made righteous. Okay, so Adam made us sinners and in condemnation, but Jesus, by his obedience, one man's obedience, we're made righteous. So we just gonna receive what Jesus did and, and let Adam go, forgive him. <laughs> forgive him, Father, for he knew not what he was doing. Verse 20, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that's how we deal with anger. We don't misplace anger and put it on our husbands, our wives, our children, the dog, the cat, ourselves, and keep abusing ourselves, keep opposing ourselves because angry and stuff. Put it where it belongs. Adam did it. Amen. And then set him free and let him go. Amen. So let's go over here and look at, uh, so that's a phase. Anger is a phase. And we just found, put the blame. If you need to blame somebody, just put it where it belongs and get set free. Then we go to the, the uh, third phase, negotiations and bargaining. Lord have mercy. This one, we really, let's go back at that cycle and look at negotiations and bargaining fake attempts and false promises we make to quit. We, we're gonna, uh, let's see, I might go back further. Denial, anger, and negotiation. Oh, I can do this. I don't need to go to a 12 step. You know, I, I, can, I, I can do this. I'm, I'm good, like my daughter used to tell me. I'm all right. I'm like, you ain't all right. But you know, until she came out of that and, and finally got to the acceptance, I, what nothing I can do, I had to, she had to go through that phase herself. So we're going to look at negotiation and bargaining. Amen. And we find that in Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. Negotiations and bargaining. Jeremiah 7. I just love the word of God. Everything is in the word of God. That's what Jesus said. If you continue in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. I love that. If, the big word there is I am. If you continue in my word, just keep on coming every Thursday. Keep on coming. Continue in his word. Then you'll know the truth 
and the truth will make you free. So when we negotiation and bargaining, we're saying what I can do. But look what Jeremiah 17, 9 says about that. Jeremiah 17, 9 says the heart, how about our heart, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? So here we are, I can do this. I'm a, you're just deceiving your own self. <laughs> Negotiating and bargaining. Okay, well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Quit it. Get out of denial. Stop negotiating and bargaining and get yourself over to a 12-step program. <laughs> stop. this. In other words, stop deceiving your own self because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Then once you get out of that and you realize, okay, I understand, I'm going to do this, and you can't do it. You realize that you, you can't fix this. You really need help. You, you are, you are, uh, uh, your life is unmanageable. You need help. Then you get sad. And, and that's a good thing. So let's go to Isaiah 61. That's, it's good when you get to that step, to that phase. This is phase four, sadness. When you get to that stage where you're sad and depressed, now that don't even sound good, but it really is a good stage because God, uh, you, now you're ready for somebody to help you. Amen. So let's go to Isaiah 61 and look at the promise in there. Isaiah 61. See, that's when you get when you get sick and tired and and sad and uh, then you're ready to to go on and and uh, let somebody help you. And it says here in Isaiah 61, one through three. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. That means you're sad. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that are sad or that mourn because your life has become unmanageable. We have good news for you. Verse three, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I'm going to come off the PowerPoint again, and I have to amplify this scripture. It's so beautiful. Step phase four, the sadness is a good place to be there because it means that you're grieving over your life. You're grieving over where you are. And when you get to that point, God can really help you. As long as you're in denial, he can't help you. Amen. As long as you're in the third phase trying to bargain, you, God, you can do this stuff and your heart is deceiving you, he can't help you. But when you get to this point, that means you're meek. That means I know I need help. It's a good place. So I'm going to read it again to you, uh, how the scripture puts it. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news. That's good tidings unto the meek. Who are the meek? People that know they need God. Then come out of denial. Then come stop blaming mama, dad, and everybody. Then stop blaming them. And now you then went through that phase where you just fool yourself, talking about I can do this. You know you can't. Just come on out of there. You can't do it. And uh, <laughs> and when you realize you need help, you begin to get mournful and depressed and sad. You're in a good place because God can't help people that are pride. 
you know, prideful. They can't help you if you, oh, I don't need no help. I don't need no help. I don't need no help. He can't help you. But he can sure help you if you uh, go on and humble yourself. And so he has sent me, that's why we're here, to bind up the brokenhearted. We telling you, you in a good place to proclaim liberty, hallelujah, to the captive. I love it. Liberty. We're proclaiming liberty and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. No more bondage. The spirit of the Lord God is going to set you free because you're ready to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It's right now. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn. So you're grieving right now. You're sad. You're in a good place because God is going to, uh, to give to you beauty for ashes because you're ready to receive it. He's going to give to you the oil of joy for mourning. See, he's going to exchange this. He's going to give to you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that you might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord God, that he might be glorified. He came to set you free. What a wonderful God. What a good place to be in that fourth phase. Amen. Sad. It's good that you're grieving over your life. You in a good place to be set free. Amen. So then once you get to that part, then you go to acceptance and you find that in Romans 7, 18. So let's go to Romans 7 and 18. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love that we can actually look at the, the process of denial and see it. We can see how it works. Amen. So Romans 7 and verse 18. We come to the place where you say, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I don't know how. I need help. Amen. I've come out. So there you are, gone through all the phases. First, it was in denial. You couldn't see that this was a a lie in your right hand, a lie in your right hand. And then anger, anger comes and is misplaced usually. And uh, it, it doesn't ever get on the right, go to the right place until you understand that uh, you have a, a person you can blame and that's called Adam. He brought that on all of us. Don't blame mama, don't blame daddy, don't blame whoever, whoever is just uh, sin. We all got that sin nature from Adam. And so at, anger is often misplaced. Misplaced anger, we know, has its own host of problems. It's got its own set of problems. Amen. And uh, one of the worst things you can have is to be angry without a cause. Angry at somebody else. Blaming them. Don't blame them. Blame Adam and blame the devil. But get yourself free. Then that's phase three, negotiation and bargain. You know, well, uh, uh, I could do this. I don't need no help. I, I, but your heart, the Bible say the heart is deceitful above all things, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And just get out of denial, get out of anger, get out of negotiation and bargaining. You need help. <laughs> and then the fourth phase, grief and sadness. We come to a point where we've been made to face the painful reality. <laughs> See, that's what I like about uh being made to face it. You know, you didn't got to a place where when you're in phase three, you know, I can do it and then you fall. I can do it and then you fall. But then you get to a point where you know you need some help, amen. So we've been made to face the painful reality and face our powerlessness in these bondages. This is the beginning of true surrender. This is where God said, now you are meek. And that means you're gonna be obedient. You're going to go through, go through this program and get the help that you need. And God is going to set you free. Amen. 
Phase five, acceptance and fear. Amen. Acceptance and fear that uh, I got to do this, but I, you know, I don't know. I don't know uh, uh, what uh, is going to happen. Fear of the unknown, fear of change. But nevertheless, we know a change got to be made. Amen. Nevertheless, we know that a change has got to be made because step number one, denial. I am powerless and my life has become unmanageable. Amen. So let me go back and read the definition, the theme words of step number one, and then we'll go to your homework. Step number one, understanding denial. You have to understand what denial is because denial is the process by which addiction is maintained. So we, once we understand it, we admit it that we were powerless over our addictions and bondages, and that our lives had become unmanageable. And you, once you get to that place, that's it called acceptance. And you're in a good place to be set free. Hallelujah. So now let's go look at the homework. So, and this is all on video. So you'll have to retrieve this and put it on paper and, uh, uh, you know, your answers and stuff. So you're going to place the five phases of denial in the circle in the order that you were taught. Now, sometimes different diff, different 12-step uh, program, they may have seven steps, uh, phases, or, or they may have some of these phases in different places. But that's why I said in the order that you were taught here, place the five phases of denial in the circles uh, in the order that you were taught. So that sadness is not number one. We know that. But it's either one, two, three, four. It's not number one. It's either two, three, four, five. So you got to place sadness where it goes, anger where it goes, denial where it goes, accept it where it goes, and negotiation where it goes. And if you forget the good thing about this being on YouTube, Zoom and YouTube, you can go back and look to see where sadness is. So let's see, sadness would be, oh, one, two, three, four. See, see, there's sadness right there, phase four. So I'm giving you a little, little hint, hint here. So you go back there and you put sadness in number four, the blue, blue circle. That's how you do your homework. And so I'm not going to tell you the rest of them. Anger, denial, acceptance, and negotiating bargain, because you got to do your own homework. <laughs> Amen. Because you're working your plan. And, and you're planning your work and you're working your plan. Then once you get them in the order that you were taught and go back and look at them, again, those definitions, look at each phase as it pertains to your own personal journey. Try to identify and write down how each one has affected your life. Pick out one that you can share for five minutes in group next week. That's your homework. So first of all, number one, you're going to put those phases, those five phases in the order that you were taught. And then you're going to go back and look at the definition and, and listen to what you were taught about denial and uh, look at all of them and see your life. Look at your life. Denial, anger, negotiation and bargaining, grief and sadness, acceptance and fear. Then you're going to go look at them in context of the scriptures. De negotiation and bargaining, the heart is deceitful, above all things, desperately wicked. I'm going to do this. You ain't going to do that because it ain't in you to do it. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, so whichever one that you can identify that you, you I'm, I'm sure you're going to identify with all of them, but pick out one that you can share for five minutes in group 
next week. And we'll see you next week on that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So that is the conclusion of step number one for New Beginnings 2 at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So now it's up to you. I'm going to turn off the recording now. And...